Good morning, children, to the geography class. Today we are going to begin with water. Good morning, children, and welcome to the geography class. In our previous class, we learned about soil and its different methods of conservation. Today we are going to talk about water. Do you know, in 1975, the consumption of water for human use was 3,850 cubic kilometers per year. It stored to more than 6,000 cubic kilometers per year in the year 2000. Okay, do you know a dripping tap weighs 1,200 liters in a year? So we should not be keeping our tap dripping. Water is a vital renewable natural resource. Three fourths of the earth's surface is covered with water. It is therefore appropriately called the water planet. It was in the primitive portion that life began almost 3.5 billion years ago. You all would be wondering what are primitive portions? Primitive portion was the first portion formed on the earth 4 billion years ago. This water, which became charged in salt from leaching the rocks on the earth, collected in the lower lying areas, which are today the bed of the ocean. It is perhaps within this water that life first appeared. Even today, the ocean water covers two-thirds of the earth's surface and supports a rich variety of plant and animal life. The ocean water is, however, saline and not fit for human consumption. Fresh water accounts for only about 2.7 percent. Nearly 70 percent of this occurs as ice sheets and glaciers in Antarctica, Greenland and mountain regions. Due to their location, they are inaccessible. Only 1% of fresh water is available and fit for human use. It is found as groundwater, as surface water in rivers and lakes and as water vapor in the atmosphere. Fresh water is therefore the most precious substance on earth. Water can neither be added nor subtracted from the earth. Its total volume remains constant. Its abundance only seems to vary because it is in constant motion cycling through the oceans, the air, the land, and back again through the process of evaporation, precipitation, and runoff. This, as you already know, is referred to as the water cycle. What is evaporation? It is the process of turning from liquids into vapor. And what is precipitation? Atmospheric water vapor that falls under gravity from clouds. For example, rain, sleet, snow, and ice. And here's new term is sleet. Sleet means rain containing some ice. In your picture, you would be even seeing the word condensation. Condensation means water which collects as droplets on a cold surface when humid air is in contact with it. Humans use huge amounts of water not only for drinking and washing but also in the process of production. Water for agriculture, industry, generating electricity through reservoirs of dams are the other usages. 
increasing population, rising demand for food and cash crops, increasing urbanization and rising standards of living are the major factors leading to shortages in supply of fresh water either due to drying up of water sources or water pollution. Problems of water availability. There is scarcity of water in many regions of the world. Most of Africa, West Asia, South Asia, parts of Western USA, Northwest Mexico, parts of South America and entire Australia are facing shortages in fresh water supply. Countries located in climatic zones more susceptible to drought face great problems of water scarcity. What is drought? A prolonged period of abnormally low rainfall. Because of that leading to a shortage of water. That is known as drought. This is the opposite of flood. Thus, water shortage may be a consequence of variation in seasonal or annual precipitation or the scarcity is caused by over-exploitation and contamination of water sources. Have you ever heard about a water market? Amreli city in Saurashtra region with a population of 1.25 lakh is completely dependent on purchasing water from the nearby Talukai. You can be noticing this city Amreli in the map of Gujarat. Conservation of water resources. Access to clean and adequate water sources is a major problem facing the world today. Steps have to be taken to conserve this dwindling resource. Even though water is a renewable resource, its overuse and pollution make it unfit for use. Discharge of untreated or partially treated sewage, agricultural chemicals and industrial affluents in water bodies are major contaminants. They pollute water with nitrates, metals, and pesticides. What do you mean by sewage? Sewage means wastewater. And what is effluent? Effluent means liquid waste or sewage discharged into a river or the sea. Water pollution can be controlled by treating these affluents suitably before releasing them in water bodies. Forest and other vegetation cover flow the surface runoff and replenish underground water. Water harvesting is another method to save surface runoff. Water is used for irrigating fields. The canals should be properly lined to minimize losses by water seepage. Sprinklers effectively irrigate the area by checking water losses through seepage and evaporation. In dry regions with high rates of evaporation, drip or trickle irrigation is very useful. The valuable water resource can therefore be conserved by adopting these means of conservation. Do you know rainwater harvesting is also helping in conserving water resource. How it is happening? The process of collecting rainwater from rooftop and directing it to an appropriate location and storing it, it for future use. On an average, one spell of rain for two hours is enough to save 8,000 liters of water. These are the water conservation methods. Like the very first, you can see the rainwater harvesting. Second is the drip irrigation. And third one is the use of sprinklers in the garden. Play your part. Be 
water smart. Here you can see some ways of water conservation. Which one are you using? And if you have not started conserving this very important resource, then please start at the earliest. Save it or do without it. Textbook pages for your reading.